Hello and welcome to this first 5 minute book review, reading books so you don't have to. Today I'm going to talk to you about um, the book by Rigoberta Manchu called My Name is Rigoberta Manchu and This is How My Conscience Was Born. Uh, the book is actually made from a series of interviews Rigoberta Manchu gave to a Venezuelan journalist when she was 23 years old. Um, it's a very interesting book and it talks about her life in Guatemala as a poor Maya peasant. Um, so the first part of the book talks about Maya traditions in Guatemala, uh, birth rituals, the role of community in Maya society, uh, the role of nature in Maya society, uh, which is very interesting. It goes into quite a bit of length. Uh, to discuss these details. Um, for instance, how uh, from the moment of an individual's birth um, this individual has a certain responsibility to its community and how um, nature is respected and uh, animals are not seen as things to exploit but as living beings uh, on the same level as humans and uh, a whole series of customs, of uh, the role of food in, in Maya society, um, etc. Then the second part of the book deals with the economics of Maya communities in Guatemala in the 60s, 70s and 80s. And this is the part in which she talks about how Maya communities are sort of relegated to remote regions where they try to do subsistence farming, um, but this subsistence farming is not enough to let them live and therefore they have to come down from the mountains to uh, different types of plantations, coffee, cotton, uh, sugar plantations, where they are exploited by westernized landowners and they have to work under very bad conditions, um, exposing themselves to uh, all sorts of dangers, such as, for instance, intoxication from um, from fumigation and uh, pesticides, and um, so therefore this type of life is really not sustainable for them. What they would prefer is to live uh, in their communities with their tradition and their languages, uh, but because they are not able to, since their communities are so far away, is um, that they have to come down to the plantations or go into the city and work as cleaning maids um, or do other types of uh, low-level jobs which they really dislike because it takes them away from their community which is really important to them and uh, it also forces them to abandon their language and their customs so it's actually an act of great violence to them um, so the third part actually talks about how when eventually these communities do manage to um, become self-sufficient uh, through farming, uh, they actually get into trouble with the land owners who are like people who are under sort of suspicious and uh, not very legitimate circumstances claim ownership to the land that the Maya people uh, worked and developed and started harvesting out of their own effort. Uh, they come and they claim ownership to land and they exploit them and they take advantage of them because um, they have access to judges and because they can read and write in Spanish which is something that most of the Maya communities um, cannot do and so uh, in the 70s and 80s these communities were put under pressure from the army to, um, to give up the rights of ownership to the lands they worked and uh, become employees for the new landowners um, and this leads to a whole series of conflicts and uh, um, kidnappings and rapes and so therefore the Maya communities uh, do not have a choice anymore and they decide to find ways to resist uh, the oppression they are subjected to. Um, which would be then the third part of the, of the book, which talks about how Rigoberto Manchu um, tries to find ways to, to fight back against this oppression 
Uh, and how does she do this? Well, ironically, she decides that she has to learn Spanish, which is the language of the oppressor. Um, and also, she tries to find arguments within Christianity, which is originally the religion of, of the colonizer. Uh, but she appropriates, for instance, by um, focusing on passages of the Old Testament, like Exodus, to, um, uh, to justify uh, or find parallels uh, that, that, can, uh, that they can emulate in their struggles. So, for instance, Moses uh, uh, rebelling against the Pharaoh um, in Egypt. Um, and so, the book ends uh, telling how most of uh, Rigoberta Menchu's family is uh, killed in different circumstances by the government and by the army and how she at one point has to leave the country because uh, it is no longer safe for her. Um, so, now this book was written a very long time ago, but it's still very interesting to understand uh, the position of indigenous communities in Latin American countries. And then the analysis uh, that I make out of it, or the question that I think is the most relevant still today is, whether American nations can give their native populations the place and rights they deserve, uh, which to me seems like something very hard, uh, because the Latin American states and the uh, North American states were born to serve the interests of uh, the colonists or the westernized elites uh, in these colonies. And these elites identify more, especially in the case of Latin America, they identify more with um, the peoples of Europe or with the North Americans than with their own indigenous um, people. So it just leads into very difficult situations uh, in which native populations are uh, really not appreciated and are actually discrim discriminated and, and really looked down upon. Um, so this sort of big gap between uh, these groups of people makes it very hard for any type of positive outlook. Uh, we can think about Bolivia and its plurinational uh, solution, uh, but then, then again Bolivia is sort of put forward as the bad, one of the bad examples of Latin American countries. Um, and whether you agree with this or not, the fact is that uh, both Bolivia and Guatemala are the only countries with a sort of majority of Native American uh, population. All the others have um, varying degrees, so going from almost none, like Brazil and Argentina, to quite significant but not ma majority uh, elements of Native American population, like Chile, Peru, and Mexico. Uh, so the Native American people have a very hard time um, finding their place in these countries and I wonder how they ever will be able to reassert their rights and find a good way of living um, within these countries. So thank you for watching, uh, I hope you like, please share or make any comments and uh, see you next time in a 5 minute review.